Hello and welcome to Government at Work. I'm your presenter, Adina Johnson. In the headlines, mountain chickens on Monsoon have survived Kitrid. Cybercrime offenses being discussed for inclusion in the penal code. These and other stories after this message. For the first time ever, the Department of Environment, Dural Wildlife Conservation Trust and the Montserrat National Trust have successfully cleared the deadly amphibian chytrid fungus from a population of captive mountain chicken frogs in a facility that replicates a wild setting. This fantastic result represents what is believed to be a world first, not just for this species but for amphibians globally. In 2019, a group of 27 captive bred mountain chicken frogs from Jersey Zoo and ZSL London Zoo were reintroduced into the semi-wild enclosures on their native island of Montserrat. The aim was to restore a population of this once abundant frog to the island. Now over a year later, the team is delighted to reveal that the frogs have faced the fungus and have survived. This marks the first time that the reintroduced amphibians have been confirmed to do so. Previous releases have unfortunately rapidly succumbed to the effects of the virus. Chytrid infection was first seen within the reintroduced population in April this year, right in the midst of the COVID-19 lockdown and the greatest dry spell the Eastern Caribbean region had experienced in eight years. Scientists and field biologists from Dural and the government of Montserrat's Department of Environment quickly intervened and managed successfully to eliminate the fungus from the semi-wild enclosures. The results of the team's efforts have huge implications for amphibians worldwide, providing a proven tool to facilitate survival of these valuable species at risk. It is thought that many species could benefit from similar management. An administrative fee of $300 for COVID-19 testing was introduced on November 1st. The Ministry of Health and Social Services said the fee must be paid at the point of sampling and will apply to all individuals except for the following. Persons traveling overseas on official government business, students undertaking a program of study at an overseas educational institution, persons under investigation by the Ministry of Health for COVID-19, close contacts of suspected and confirmed cases of COVID-19, and patients referred overseas for medical treatment. To be eligible for a waiver of the fee, persons must present proof of exemption by way of a letter from the head of department outlining official travel abroad, a letter from the medical doctor issuing the medical referral or proof of enrollment in an overseas educational institution. 
individuals traveling to or returning from vacation and those accommodating friends or family in quarantine will not be eligible for exemption. The fee will go towards mitigating costs associated with COVID-19 testing. Efforts have been made by the government of Montserrat to establish standards which will guard against online computer-related crimes here. The Ministry of Communication, Works, Labour and Energy is in the process of introducing legislation on cybercrime within the Penal Code. As part of the process to finalize and implement the amendments, the Ministry held a town hall meeting to obtain public input on the draft Penal Code Amendment Bill. The bill will amend the Penal Code Cap 4.02 by inserting various cybercrime offences. This amendment to the Code seeks to protect the citizens and residents of Montserrat from information communication technology crimes to include identity theft, computer-related forgery, violation of privacy, child pornography, harassment and other offences which utilise electronic or online communication. During the town hall discussion on October 29th, Minister Dr. The Honourable Samuel Joseph said the world is becoming more virtual and so the laws must be updated to account for the increased online use. As we all know, the world is becoming more virtual, more and more things are going online, more and more of our activities through e-commerce, through entertainment are taking place through the virtual world, through computers, through phones, through tablets. And some of the laws that we have now do not take into account, uh, how do you put it, activities, any, act, any human activity is going to have people that do things that they should not be doing for the full, smooth functioning of society of things that we call offenses. So we have to modernize our legislation to take into consideration the fact that the world has changed and a lot of things that used to happen in what we call the real world are now moving virtually. So things like, you know, stealing occurs in the real world, but stealing in the virtual world may be a different way, may take place in a different kind of way. So in order to make sure legislation is in tune to the direction in which the world is going and to the direction in which Montserrat is going, we are proposing some amendments to the cybercrime bill and we are coming to the public to see what their views are so that we can make any adjustments before we finally bring it to the legislative assembly. The Director of Public Prosecution, Oris Sullivan, echoed the sentiments of the Minister as it relates to the increased use of online communications. He explained the importance of the amendment for prosecutors and investigators. Earlier this year, um, those of us on Montserrat would have heard complaints about two of our prominent mem members of society being charged with criminal libel. Uh, the general complaint was that in most of the jurisdictions, libel is no longer an offense. But in Montserrat, it still is. And in charging people, we had to take into account what is available, which fits into the particular circumstance for which we, we can charge. And in those circumstances, libel was the only thing that, that the infringement fitted into. With this new penal code amendment, it would assist prosecutors, it would assist investigators in charging or finding something suitable within the penal code setting for these offenses to be dealt with. Individuals have until November 9th to submit their feedback to the Ministry of Communications. Input on the Penal Code Amendment Bill 2020 must be submitted to mcw at gov.ms. You're watching Government at Work and we have more stories for you after this message. Stop. It's time for dinner. It's only a little bit. I said it's dinner time, Jason. After that, can I have candy? You've had enough candy for the week. But I didn't have any today. I said no, Jason. But Daddy always lets me have candy. David, I need you to help me with this. I tell Jason no candy, and he says Daddy always lets him eat candy. I'm not arguing with you. Look, all I'm saying is before you agree to something like candy or watching extra TV, ask him what did mommy tell you. 
Yeah, if this positive discipline method is going to work, we have to stick together. Okay. Alright, bye. Okay, Jason, time for dinner. Positive discipline is most effective when both parents agree on what methods to use. Support each other and you'll be able to see improvements more consistently. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Education, UNICEF, this station, and funded by UK Aid. The Statistics Department of Montserrat of the Ministry of Finance and Economic Management is conducting a post-COVID-19 labor force survey via telephone. The survey will be conducted on 850 households from Tuesday, November 3rd until Thursday, December 31st, 2020. The Statistics Department explained that the main objective of the data collection exercise is to obtain relevant information on the labor force characteristics and the impact of COVID-19. This information will assist planners in the various sectors of society to more ably plan for the development in education, health, the environment, and other socioeconomic areas. Only usual residents of Montserrat will be enumerated and all persons 15 years and older will answer labor force questions. In more statistics news, World Statistics Day was observed on October 20th with the local statistics department implementing several activities in observance of the day. For World Statistics Day 2020, the department officially launched their Facebook page, Statistics Department Montserrat, with a series of quizzes, short videos of testimonials from various members of our local community were also shared on the department's Facebook page. The video series, which encouraged the public to provide better data for better lives, highlighted the impact of statistics on our everyday affairs. Here's a clip from one of those videos. Stephen Menz, I'm an environment technician at the Department of Environment. I mostly do education and outreach. Compilation of data in terms of figures, information that you collect so that you can come up with a reasonable deduction of what um, your results will be. Hi, my name is Jeff and Gerald. I'm a producer. I specialize in adverts and advertising. Well, for me, Statistics means a lot because advertising has to do with the demographic. We need to know the age ranges, the ratio between female and male. Statistics is the collection of data. I am the right honorable Justin Hero Castle. There's so many acronyms behind my name. I just use one today. Calypsonian, agriculturalist, to add one more. Eh? Mean a lot to anybody and especially me because I have to rely on certain figures to inform certain decisions. Hello, my name is Tivon Howe and I'm a volcanologist. Statistics involves collecting data, analyzing, modeling, and making interpretations of the data for a chosen reason. Well, in our field of work, we use statistics quite a bit, especially in terms of um, what we call environmental indicators. We use a lot of statistics for um, bird data. Um, basically, we do an annual census every year for about 20 different species of birds. The ways we can do this are observing, doing a census, or doing interviews. Statistics help me to help my clients by allowing me to create different content that targets a certain market. What the country is spending on the importation of vegetables and meat. I have to go to the Department of Statistics and rely on their figures to inform my discussion. So statistics is very, very important. Statistics plays an important part in volcanology, especially where statistical modeling has been applied in relation to forecasting volcanic eruptions. There are about 1,500 active volcanoes on Earth and millions of people live within 100 kilometers of an active volcano.
Germs are tiny little things that can cause disease and make us very sick. They are so tiny that we cannot see them, but they are everywhere. Everything we touch causes germs to get on our hands, but when they get into our bodies, that is when they can make us very sick. That's why it is very important for us to wash our hands often. The Ministry of Health, Montserrat, has taught our primary school children how to wash their hands properly. Do you know how? You must always use soap to wash your hands. Wash for at least 20 seconds, ensuring that you wash between the fingers, under the fingernails, and up to the wrists. Rinse thoroughly with running water and dry with a paper towel. Washing well and often is a hallmark of good health and reduces the risk of contracting and spreading infectious diseases. This message was brought to you by the Ministry of Health, Montserrat. A rebranded destination website for Montserrat was launched in October. The Montserrat Tourism Division Office of the Premier launched the destination website www.visitmontserrat.com on October 9, 2020. Director of Tourism Warren Solomon described the launch as a major step in enhancing our marketing capabilities. He said the website will play a key role in generating awareness, providing users with compelling stories and information on the island's history, culture, sites, and attractions, giving them all that they need to book a Montserrat vacation. Another objective of the new website is to create an enabling environment, enabling environment for Montserrat's tourism stakeholders to promote their services, giving visitors to the site a more holistic experience of the destination. The launch of the website is regarded as a key milestone in the implementation of the island's tourism strategy and received valuable inputs not just from members of the local tourism industry, but also international travel and media partners. The website incorporates striking imagery and video content, and the primary goal during the design phase was to create a more user-centric and responsive resource across all platforms and devices. A new feature that was not part of the previous versions of the destination website is a dedicated section outlining all of the requirements and application forms for individuals or media companies interested in coming to film in Montserrat. While leisure travel to the island is still prohibited, the tourism division views it as critical that the destination remains visible to the travel market so that when the borders are reopened, Montserrat will be one of the warm weather destinations being considered by consumers. The energy unit in the Ministry of Communication, Works, Energy and Labor will be conducting a number of activities during the month of November in observance of CARICOM Energy Month. CARICOM Energy Month is an annual event aimed at improving persons' awareness and demonstrating the importance of sustainable, secure, and affordable energy. During the month, the energy unit aims to not only demonstrate the importance of renewable energy resources through theoretical examples, but also via hands-on experiences. Director of Energy Kenrick Burke said this form of capacity building, especially with the youth, is critical to achieve the energy goals set out for Montserrat. The activities include an address by the Minister of Energy, Dr. The Honorable Samuel Joseph. There are also opportunities for members of the public to win cash prizes in several competitions to include logo, poster, poetry, and video competitions. Other activities during the month will include a school lecture series targeting students in Form 5 at the Montserrat Secondary School and Grade 6 students at the primary level. A weekly radio quiz and school tour of energy assets are also included in the list of activities. Initial discussions have started to explore the options available to allow the Ministry of Agriculture to market or showcase their products and work online. The Minister of Agriculture, Lands, Housing and the Environment, the Honorable Cranston Buffong, said they are hoping to design an online tool to allow persons in the diaspora, investor and merchants to see what is available in the Ministry. He said the Ministry has had one meeting with officials at the Ministry of Communications to discuss the idea. It's to design an, a, a, a piece of a hardware, a piece of a software for that matter, that can upload what we have everything in our agriculture sector that then can be seen from outside. So let's say you're a merchant and you want to know what's at the ministry or what's at the farm. Then you can tap into that software and see, well, this is what's happening and this is what's coming. It's still in the development stages. 
and we're quite keen to see where that gets to eventually. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can look and see what's doing in Montreal and um, what's available. Honorable Cranston Buffong speaking on 664 Connects in the Hot Seat Programme. The community policing effort of the Royal Montserrat Police Service has been boosted with the graduation of five persons as police community support officers. The officers, Sonia Gale Kaby, Angelia Kaby, Taj Hertold, Reggie Jackson and Celine Sinclair graduated from their training course on October 23rd. The community support officers participated in the police cadet program which was launched in September this year. During the graduation ceremony, Commissioner of Police Steve Foster emphasized the importance of confidentiality and implored the officers to uphold the highest standard of integrity during their duty. The public comes to the police when they are aggrieved or looking for justice. I want you to listen carefully. You will not, you must not take the people's business and send it all over the world. On WhatsApp, Facebook or Facebook, Instagram, or whatever gram or books that you have access to. The information you receive must be treated with strictest confidence and not to be divulged to any unauthorized person. Remember, I said, it is privileged information. You are in a position to get that information, so you must also keep that information in a matter of trust. Confidentiality must be at the forefront of your mind at all times. A person must be able to confide in you about their problems, and you must deal with it in a professional manner. Inspector Julian Wade, who was involved in the training of the officers, expressed his desire to see the five community support officers contributing positively to the development of a more effective and efficient police service on the island. I truly believe that this joint training provided all of us with a forum to various issues in order to involve communities for the betterment of the criminal justice and criminal justice administration. Moreover, our common interest in the safety of our communities motivated earnest study and pro produced results beneficial, beneficial to us all. I have no doubt that such a valuable outcome encouraged all of us to develop and enhance the partnership between communities and the justice system. The Police Cadet Program is a joint initiative by the RMPS, the Munsford Fire and Rescue Services, and the Department of Community Youth and Sports Services. Our final story after this message. One of those golden apples for me. <laughs> sure, Miss Lisa. Can I speak to your mom, please, Terry? Thanks, Terry. So, um... Renee told me that you were shouting at her and I noticed a bruise on her left arm in class. I've been trying to follow this positive discipline list, but she doesn't listen. I have two jobs and by the time I get home, she doesn't want to go to sleep and I can't deal with all her crying and disobedience. I understand you must be exhausted. Does she have a routine to follow? Not really. I make whatever is easiest as she does her homework and I send her to bed. But she always manages to stay up for an extra three hours and ask a million and one questions. How about you try this? First of all, plan out all your meals for the week. Even if you're going to pick up the ingredients on the same day, knowing what you will cook will take some of the stress of wondering what to do. Then sit with her to review her homework. You guys can chat over dinner and then let her help you wash up. Give her the chance to ask questions, Terry. And make sure to ask her about her day as well. Then when she's ready for bed, she has the chance to ask you just one more question before it's time for lights out. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> In class, she asks questions all the time. It's her way of spending time with you. And I'm sure if you give her the chance to talk to you, she'll be more amenable to going to bed on time. And that means more free time for you. So this positive discipline thing working for you? 
To be honest, some days better than others. But I am getting a lot more practice seeing as he's spending most of his day with me now. Okay, I'll give you a suggestion a try. And if you ever need someone to talk to or somebody to watch out for you while you work, I'm happy to help. Thanks, Miss Lisa. Let me get going. I'm on to job number two. It's tough to care for a child when you're under stress as well. Ask a friend or family member to assist when you're having trouble coping. This message brought to you by the Ministry of Education, UNICEF, this station, and funded by UK Aid. During the month of October, the Department of Environment conducted an education campaign on migratory shorebirds. The aim of the campaign was to educate people of Montserrat about migratory shorebirds, their habitat, and the threats that they face. The Department of Environment said that the initiative was focused on helping people to become more aware of how their activities affect these birds, and people will be able to understand one of the many reasons why wetlands are important. As part of the activities throughout the month, the department held presentations and field trips for school students and community groups. Members of the public also had opportunities to participate in educational events on October 17th and October 24th, where they were able to learn about shorebirds and see them in their habitats. School trips to Margarita Bay and Cars Bay were also conducted on October 29th. Shorebirds can be spotted in a number of areas on Montserrat to include Cars Bay, Margarita Bay, Old Roads Bay and other beaches, ponds and guts. They are seen in the Caribbean between late August to February when they are migrating to their winter homes. The Showbird Project is sponsored by Birds Caribbean, a non-profit organization that strives to protect and conserve Caribbean birds and habitats. Thank you for tuning in to Government at Work. Join us on the first Monday of next month for our next government news package. I am Adina Johnson, and on behalf of the GIU Government at Work production team, thank you for watching. <laughs>